Good morning, President Trumka. I'm Bedevi Desai of the National Taxi Workers Alliance. So we represent a workforce that does not have pensions, we don't have social security contributions, we don't even have access to unemployment insurance. And it's for that very reason that I stand in support of Resolution 9. Because you see, when that ceiling gets held up for the entire working force, then those of us who are at the very bottom we have a shot to shoot up. But when that ceiling crashes down, that floor comes down even further, and people like us get crushed. We understand that the struggle of public sector workers of today is the very struggle that we fought 30 years ago, and we lost that struggle. And because of that loss, we deeply understand the significance of the fight to hold up collective bargaining and the other rights that we are talking about in this resolution. I hope that in the spirit of this resolution, what we are really talking about is crushing poverty. It's, you know, it's about looking at income inequality, not only in the form of contracts that are negotiated, but about the very social issues that keep the millions of workers who are non-unionized, or even if they are unionized, do not have access to many of these benefits, that we as a movement make an uncompromised commitment to holding social programs that support the poor every day in this country. Hi, I'm Laura Flanders, and we are at the AFL-CIO Convention 2013 in Los Angeles. All right, quick question for you. Did you ever consider that your taxi driver could be affiliated with this, the nation's largest labor federation? Well, as of 2011, there's a good chance they were. The Taxi Drivers Alliance in 2011 became the 57th affiliate member of the AFL-CIO. What does that mean? Are the taxi drivers a union? And what does that mean for the AFL itself to have made this relationship with this extraordinary bottom-up grassroots organization? I'm very thrilled to welcome back to GRIT TV somebody whose career we've been following for years, Baravi Desai of the Taxi Workers Alliance. It used to be the New York Taxi Drivers, now it's national. Baravi, welcome. <laughs> Thank you. So, Answer the question. Are you a union? Are you not a union? <laughs> what do we need to know about our taxi drivers? We're a union. If a union means a group of workers banding together to stand up for dignity on the job and to use their coll collective power, then we are a union. <laughs> what we are not is under the labor laws a collective bargaining agent because as independent contractors we don't have that right. Well, that's why it's so extraordinary that the independent contractors of the Taxi Workers Alliance mm -hmm. have come into this relationship mm -hmm. with this decades-old traditional mm -hmm. labor federation. Mm -hmm. Explain just what <laughs> the significance is. Well, in many ways, it's flipping the script, you know, because I think for generations, we've really been used to workers gaining collective bargaining recognition than a union coming in, right, winning a campaign. Um, and once you establish that vote, then you're a bona fide union, um, and then you get to join. You, you can affiliate with the AFL-CIO. The way that we've done it is we're not waiting to win collective bargaining recognition. We're establishing ourselves as a mass-based, independent, democratic workers' organization and through our affiliation of the AFL-CIO, you know, building our political power, our numbers, our strength, our resources to one day win collective bargaining. So this is a very big deal that you're sitting here in front of us with this AFL-CIO 2013 delegates ribbon on. <laughs> it's pretty exciting. <laughs> you are, I think, I looked at all the tables, I think you're the only non-union mm -hmm. that's there as an affiliate. Are you mm -hmm. a first? We are the first organization, of, or first workforce, I should say, of independent contractors that have been affiliated to the AFL-CIO. You know, we, we received an organizing committee charter in 2011. Um, it was a unanimous vote at the Executive Council. And that was the first ch charter for non-traditional workers 
since um, the 1940s, I believe. And so prior to us, it was the steel workers and then the farm workers. So we, we're, you know, we're in a pretty good legacy here. <laughs> we feel pretty damn proud about that. But perhaps people who are not up on Negra TV watching <laughs> and may not know as much about the Taxi Workers Alliance as they mm -hmm. should, who are your members? Um, what's the job that you do, Barabi? Our members are the men and women who, you know, drive in New York City alone half a million people every single day. We are the main mode of transportation for New Yorkers from downtown Manhattan to the airports. We do more than 30,000 trips from the major airports alone in, the, in just in New York City. Um, across the country, you're talking about, you know, a, half a million workforce you know of men and women primarily from primarily immigrants over 90 percent from you know south asia india pakistan bangladesh nepal sri lanka to now increasingly parts of um, east africa from um, and west africa so senegal ghana you know ethiopia eritrea ivory coast to North Africa and the Arab world, um, Sudan, Morocco, Algeria. And the kind of life for those taxi workers, it's hard work. It's really grueling labor. You know, people work 12 hour shifts. In Houston, they work 14 to 16 hour shifts. You can imagine, Laura, if they get two fares in a day, that's a good day. You get three fares in a day, it's like a miracle. Drivers will wait online at the airport lot for up to six, seven hours at a stretch. You know, um, we don't have guaranteed income. We don't have pensions and social security contributions and employer health care funds and all because as independent contractors, we don't have even the right to collective bargaining. Mm -hmm. But what we do have are organizations across this country of taxi drivers who even within their 60 to 70 hour work week are standing up for themselves and demanding justice on the job. So we've been winning fair raises and capping the lease. That we Drivers in this country begin every day at a negative, paying to lease or rent out the car or the medallion or whichever permit is in their city. And so the bosses are guaranteed a super profit while the workers are not even guaranteed an income. Well, I was going to ask you about the bosses and who they are mm -hmm. exactly. They, they really range from city to city, um, <clears throat> but they are organized in many trade associations. In New York City, we have three of them. They've been around for over 60 years. Um, nationally, there's, a, a, there's the TLPA, which is a national trade association. Every year, they meet with the regulators, a so, national association, and they have a joint board meeting. And so a few years ago, we, uh, we crashed their little party. <laughs> we got into the regulators conference and they would literally have sessions on how to advance your local policy by demonizing drivers. You know, and they would talk about like if there was a, God forbid, an accident where a passenger was injured or even, you know, it was a fatal accident, that how to use that moment to promote a social policy, you know, public policy around that would basically lead to more enforcement against drivers. And so the, the bosses and the regulators have been working together as one for decades now. But now as the National Taxi Workers Alliance, workers have a national voice. And we're not, we're not looking for a seat at the table. We want to dismantle that table. Because <laughs> it, it was built on our backs for too many decades. You actually do have a seat at the table, <laughs> at the table of the AFL-CIO mm -hmm. Executive Council. And that's one we want to keep. <laughs> <laughs> what did that mean, to get voted on to the council at this convention? I think it's a real validation that the working class movement in this country um, has a labor movement that recognizes that contingent workers, who are now 33% of the American workforce, fastest growing segment of the American workforce, you know, temp workers, independent contractors, um, that our, our struggle as working people is being lifted up. That it's not just the struggle of workers that are classified as employees, right? Because classifications are not what are going to define the unity of our movement. 
you will have a chance not just to be lifted up, but to lift your voice on this council. What kind of things are you going to be lifting your voice for? What does the AFL need to do to really change change life for taxi drivers? Well, I'll tell you, you know, we the way we built our movement, because we didn't have a contract, we didn't have recognition, no one had to come to the table and meet with us. We did it by militant action. We had demonstrations and, you know, work stoppages and strikes and that sense of militancy is what we 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 need to set that ablaze throughout you know throughout all the industries in our country and i think that's something that working people have that spirit people are sick and tired of an economic system where you know the, you know the banks mean more than people you know where you know some rich guys right to own a couple of more yachts is somehow more significant than a family holding on to a house that's been in their family for generations and generations. You know, or just, you know, the right to people, I know, at the end of the day, an eight hour shift or 12 hour shift, God forbid, a 14, 16 hour shift, being able to live a dignified life where you're not deep in poverty, where you have health care, and at, at the end of your tenure, after all the years and decades you put in with your labor, you're gonna have social security. You know that we and that we have a political yeah. system that's not going to be just corrupted by money and corporate interests, where, you know, where the the humanhood of a corporation is not going to be valued more than the, the real humanness of a human being. I hear perhaps they're going to be getting a dose of militancy with the presence <laughs> of Barvi Desai and the taxi workers at the UAFL CIO to really crush poverty. We as a labor movement have to be aggressive. Capital is unbelievably aggressive. They're unapologetic, you know, they, and they, they remain creative. They, they don't take no for an answer. And neither can we as a movement. You're global now, or wanting to be. Where does that stand, <laughs> the, the global spread of the Taxi Workers Alliance? Well, we, you know, we do have um, sister organizations in other parts of the world. There's a fantastic transport workers union in Kathmandu, Nepal, that we work really closely with. Also, a taxi drivers organization, sister union in um, in Punjab, Pakistan. And so, um, you know, capital knows no borders, and neither do workers. And it, it's true, particularly in this day and age, like it's not rhetoric. In order to really uplift the standards for any group of workers, we need each other. Mm. We can't allow the floor to fall on anybody. I've heard it from the domestic workers, I've heard it from the restaurant workers, um, that it's not just the workers, but the customers and those receiving the services that need to work together. What do those of us who take taxis um, mm -hmm. from the airport or to school, uh, mm -hmm need to do or could do to help mm -hmm. your campaign? <laughs> well, one is, I mean, you know, there's the economics of it, right? Tips, taxi drivers also tipped workers. Believe me, a, a tip from at the end of the year, the amount you make in tips could be what takes you over a minimum wage and puts you closer to a livable income. So you the know? tipped workers are the workers who are not working for the federal minimum, but working for the tipped minimum, two thirteen an hour? Yes. Now, we, we don't earn wages, so we're not even covered under that. We don't even have any rights to minimum wage at any level. Um, All right, so tip well. Anything yeah. else? Support the organizing. Talk to the driver that you're somebody who understands that every working person has a right to labor with dignity and that you will support that when, the, when taxi drivers stand up, you will stand in solidarity with them. We thrive together right or we fall together and don't let that partition separate you. Baravi Desai, <laughs> the Taxi Workers Alliance, the 57th affiliate of the AFL-CIO, an alliance of private independent contractors and now a member of the Federation of Labor.